Welcome to Steven Johnson Does Stocks, everybody. Now, there's two surprises in this upcoming video. The first surprise is that there is live fucking trading. And I'm excited to do live trading because I've never done live trading before. Unfortunately, the first live trading I did was actually a loss. Uh, but just quickly to summarize things, the video is very long because live trading is actually quite long because the process is long. I want to say that I made about 800 bucks this month. I've had back to back to back to green months. Uh, I'm looking right now to um, kind of, I made a lot of mistakes. You'll hear the explanation in the Excel. I'm looking to go from making 1,000 a month to 2,000 a month, and then from 2,000 a month to 4,000 a month, and, and gradually grow that. Uh, but everything is sweet. Uh, the one announcement that I've got now is that I'm doing live trading. The next announcement will come at the end. I'll see you all later. So if you're still watching past the madness of whatever I've done, because that will be in the future, even though it's not shown in chronological order, uh, I will sh do the first part of the video before. Uh, yeah, I mean, I ended November 775 bucks up, made a lot of mistakes, blew up a trade zero account. I got charged $400 commissions on a fucking DCIX shipping fit stock because I didn't realize the borrows. Um, so, I mean, had I not made the stupid $1,000 loss on the long on, on LMFA, and had I not got charged $400 plus dollars on borrows for DCIX, which I didn't realize, which I also took off profits, I mean, I would have made, been about 1100 up without the borrows and blown up a 900 account on LMFA when I was tired. I mean, it, it was almost a two grand month. And I know it's all ifs, buts, and maybes, but I believe that if I cancel out these stupid mistakes, which obviously I have because I'm not with Trade Zero, so I'll not get the borrows. And I'm not trading in the afternoon when I'm tired, so I'll not do anything stupid like blowing up an account at 1 o'clock in the morning, Dubai time. There's no reason why I can't have a 15, 16, 2,000, 2,100 dollar month. The other thing is, is I'm obviously, I'm not under PDT with interactive brokers anymore. I've, I've put in the, the, the account balance when it settles, it will go well. It should, I think it's going to be about 20, 27,000. Yes, I took a loan of 7,000 dollars. It's dormant money. It's just going to be sitting there. And I'm going to be, I'll aim to pay the loan off within three months. So it's not like I'm borrowing money for very long. It's just sitting there to make sure, I mean, it's like $19,000 is my money and $7,000 is the bank. I'm sure I'll lose me $19,000 if I ever do before I lose the $7,000. So it's risky, but it's not risky. And me goal now is say I'll, I'll update these properly and I've only got one broker so you'll, you'll always accurately to the TC profit and loss and the count percentage growth because I've just got the one broker now I can just update that final number every time and the aim is to trade pretty conservatively to build me account from the I mean I've, I've proven now I can quite consistently make around a thousand bucks a month even with terrible things going wrong so if I get disciplined cut out the mistakes I want to grow the account from 27 to 30,000 quite sensibly pay off that loan in the meantime and then anything over 30 I'm going to start going a bit quite more aggressively because I know I've got that 5,000 cushion where if something does go wrong and I do lose a couple of thousand being aggressive uh, it's okay I'm still not I'm still not breaking PDT I'm not having to add in to the account uh, and then once I'm above 30 I'm going to start going aggressively for 40,000, 50,000, 60,000 and really scaling up so I'll still scale up for three, four, five hundred dollar trades now but my biggest risk will be $100, $200, where once I get above 30000 in the account, I'll start thinking I'll risk $500 to make 1500 or a grand to make five grand. And I'm, I'm excited. I mean, you're going to see some big, big changes in the future. So with OHRP, it's a similar theme all week. I've been shorting a bit too heavy pre-market. And it's, it's kind of a gap in crap. I mean, if we look, I was short on, on this day on the 27th. And it's the same thing that I always do. I mean, it's a terrible long-term chart. It's from the 270s down to the 90s. So it's kind of triple decreased in terms of its uh, stop price. And when it's having this kind of, this gap of day uh, on news, which I'm pretty sure is not that positive, and it's a biotech, and biotechs always come back down because with biotechs, they're all manufacturing biotechnological drugs or whatever the fuck it is. But basically, they're all getting funding from shareholders to make drugs to get FDA approved. And like none of these drugs ever get approved. So all these companies end up failing. So when they release some semi 
kind of meaningful news, even if it is good news, if it's not life-changing news or company-changing news or like we're going to be millionaires news as a business, all the long-term bag holder shareholders just sell into the spikes and it drives it back down and then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So on this day, I was thinking, right, it's a terrible long-term shot. It's up more than usual. I'm going to short it. And the final, the nail in the coffin was when it was downtrending pre market So if you go back to the kind of the five-day charts to get to the 27th, you could see it rocketed on the news, which again, wasn't life-changing, maybe some FDA-related news. And I was shorting in, into the ones in the 99s as it was coming down, thinking, look, this is just going to come down and wash out. And I was up, I was up about 200 pre-market, and then I was up about 400 as it washed out here. And I got greedy, and I went for the big win, and I didn't lock in all of the profits. I locked in 60 bucks, uh, maybe 120 bucks, and then when it ramped up, I was in too big, too early. Story of the week, really. And I had to sell in case I was going to turn a good trade and a win into a loss and spiked up and had, it actually came back down. But I think, well, I'm not, I'm not um, like when it's kind of got this kind of red to green move from where it opened, it's pushing into new highs. It's like, look, if it breaks this, I'm out. So I took some profits here and then I pretty much cut what would have turned into a loss had I have held into this spike. The lesson is don't go too big. Either take a lot of your... Had I have shortened into this, fine, it's a massively violently downtrend in uh, pre-market action, very weak, on a very weak stock, which is overextended. But you've got to take off a lot of your position into the 87s, 88s here. Yeah. So when it does pop back up to the ones, you feel comfortable riding out the storm. So the long-term chart takes its course. And look, had I not been in too big a position, I wouldn't have got squeezed. Had I felt the next day, it's down to back to the 70s. And then it kind of did pop back up, squeeze some shorts, which is quite interesting. But the move was there. I was just too big too soon. Story of the week, I'm not going big pre-market. Again, I've, I've learned a valuable lesson. So this is APEN, and it's a royally, royally, royally good short that I've really fucked up. It's one of the biggest fuck-ups I've done in a while. And it's because I got a bit over aggressive shortening in the pre-market. And when you look at the six month chart, I mean, the, the news is, um, we can see it. Ah! The news is that on the, when was it? 27th of November, Apollo Endo surgery receives FDA clearance and something, something, something. But generally when these biotechs get some sort of clearances, it never really means anything. And when the stock's got a two year chart like APEN, which is down from the 32s to the 4s, you know that there's bag holders and people selling into every single spike. When you couple that with the fact that it's got this kind of, on the six month chart, it's even got this these other lines of resistance kind of around here. It's kind of, it's it's, it's got resistance everywhere. I mean, it's, it's struggled to push through here, it's struggled to push through here. So you know, and it's struggled to push through here. So you, you know that it's gonna, have a difficult time getting through this and it's already up from the 430s to the sixes at one point like it's already up 30 40 percent so for me it was a textbook guaranteed short but where i got myself extraordinarily upside down was when i got in way too early now i was thinking this i knew this is a textbook guaranteed short and we know that it's a textbook guaranteed short because the fundamentals of the company are terrible the news isn't very worthwhile. There's resistance everywhere. And it was in the 40s and it's now in the fives. So I was just a little bit eager and it did. I was shortened on this day. Should have had I been shortened, could I would have shut her in the 550s? I could have been out in the fours, 450s, taking like 20% on five grand. Hamdalilla, that's fucking thousand dollar profit, Stephen. Pat yourself on the fucking back. But what I actually did is I got a bit eager. I got a bit too ready to jump in and I started short and big right in this area here yeah. so I was thinking ah, it's it's coming down it's coming down it's coming down now I was I say it popped up and it was coming down I was throwing in orders for like 300 400 shares so I was in a thousand bucks then two thousand bucks then three thousand bucks then when it dropped down I was in about five grand in, in the in the in the end and then when it dropped down to here I had an order for like a couple of shares bought and that was me day trading I had no more day trades left 
Because once on interactive brokers, you can sell and sell and sell and sell, but once one buy order goes through, that's your PDT up. You can only buy back, you can't sell more. So when it ripped up and the open, I was just like, fuck, I would have shorted more into this, to be honest. I would have built in 10 grand because I was positive that it was going to go down. But at this point, I was a grand down. Then this point, I was 1,200 down. And Tim Bone makes the joke. He was like, you risked 12 grand. And you missed 1,300. You risked $1,300 to make $50, which of course is true because I didn't expect it to spike and I got greedy. But the lesson I learned from this is don't go too aggressive short pre-market. It can still spike short into the big spikes and had I shoulda coulda woulda fucking dudda short in the 650s I could have been covering out in the 560s and then more in the 540s but as a bit aggressive I got turned upside down ended up holding this and getting out the next day in the 520s for about a $40 profit but I nearly committed suicide jumping off me balcony I drank myself to death with worry I was at work thinking what the fuck is going on with me life and I could have banked a grand instead of making 40 and having a nervous breakdown. Okay, so we're going to do things a little bit differently. Yeah, I think it's interesting to show you beforehand on the trades. I'm trading this live. So this is IMMR and it's like, say, one year back. Uh, it's, it's like death drop, death drop. And then it's got a lot of resistance here on the eights. Uh, so I'm thinking it's had this big day, but it's going to struggle to get through the, the eights on weak news and no real volume. Uh, so I'm actually short, I've took a little position pre-market, I'm short from the 274s and uh, we can see that the prices are coming through our kind of 273s, it's down 1% right now. It's a little bit scary that it had this strong close, but we know that it's got resistance in the 8s and the 9s. Uh, so I'm literally watching to wait and see what happens here. Um, I'm going to average up in the 8s and the 9s and I'm a bit worried about this 720s level, so I'm going to Take it slow and I'm ideally looking at this kind of all day and I'll update you a bit later on on it. So this is short selling in real time. It's pretty boring. Uh, right now, um, I can just check I'm up 35 bucks. Uh, you can see it's kind of held the 30s, pop back up to the 40s, but it's just a, it's a lower high from here. Uh, it's under VWAP right now and I'm just waiting for the lower high to confirm and for it to crack the 725s. I'm in uh, $4,700 right now, just building in from an average of $735. So I'm actually kind of break even around here, but I think based on the like the long-term chart and the amount of downside it's got, this could easily come down, back down to the 650s. Uh, it just needs to test and crack this uh, previous resistance. Where is it? But it's a slow one because it's a 26 million floor. There's not a lot of volume, but all the longs are underwater. But you can see that it's um if we just go out 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 and it's got a lot this is what i was always worried about it's held the, like the 720s 730s quite well so it might be hard to crack through but i think give it the out like the longs are in a lot of pain now like everyone who was kind of holding around here is in a lot of pain and is it cracking yeah 730s are kind of testing again up 35 bucks not a lot but the longs are in a lot of pain so if this if this level cracks it could easily go down to the six 40s to 620s, I think there's no reason why not to. The news is about a fucking new CEO. It's nothing special. So just patience and waiting and that's it. Wow, so now we're seeing a real snap here. We're snapping down to the 718s. And if I just check, yeah, whoa. So that puts me up, uh, can you see it? No. So I'm up like 130, 130 bucks now. And 138, 140, it's going to keep on increasing. Uh, as this continues to snap, I've got a cover at 716. Uh, but the, um, the important thing is, <laughs> the important thing is, it's coming back a bit, but it's cracked. Uh, I'm trying to zoom back. Zoom, zoom, zoom. And you may think I'm pretty cool here. I mean, the main support area is around the 715s, 720s. So it's supporting around the 715s and just cracked to, just tested for the first time these 717 area. And uh, so now I'm up 110, 120. But the fact that it cracked is the most important thing. So it should come down now, or it's looking like it's coming down. Buyers up, sell out, buyers up, longs are panicking. So we've got the bottom, then it, it's kind of bottomed here, but then it's just fell through. So. Just wait and see, and, and hopefully it's going to crack further. 
<laughs> so it's kind of it's quite interesting. So the last time you saw the video, you saw it cracking here, and in hindsight, I thought it would test a few times, and then crack in the afternoon. But this 716, 718 area you can see is a is strong support from yesterday. This is what I was worried about. And it did push off hard. Um, whether it's an institution or what, it pushed from the 720s up to the 750s in a matter of seconds. Luckily, I'd covered half my position by this point. So had I have covered around here, I would have been about I would have made about 40 bucks still, but I literally went down from 130 up to 40 up. And by that time I was just like, whatever, I'll see if it comes back down. Then I fell asleep and then I cut it into the close in the 155s. But the point is, worst case scenario as as uh, as up 100 and worst case as never down on the street. The worst case I lost seven bucks. Best case I've made 130. So risking 10, 20 bucks to, to make 130 is like and potentially more is that's like seven to one risk reward. So I always say this is a very good trade. Uh, just the way I played it. This unexpected push, not unexpected, but it pushed quite hard with volume. Uh, this unexpected push kind of was unfortunate. The time of covering was a bit unfortunate, but this is trading. I mean, it's uh, it's. I'm not I'm not I'm not bothered anymore. I'm not bothered about the fifty dollar wins and the fifty dollar losses. Like I'm here for the days that it does crack and I make three four hundred. This is the mindset that I'm putting myself in now. What's up, motherfucker? Here I am. Steven Johnson, Steven Johnson stocks. I'm feeling like I should turn the music down because it's going to get louder, but I just want to say that the final announcement is that I am over PDT, but the argument is, how did I get over PD? And obviously, um, I had about 14,000 in the Interactive Progress account. I uh, added another 4,000 to make it 18,000. And then the last seven, I think I took out a loan for, and I was like saying to my parents, I was like, guys, do you think I'm mental if I take a loan out for $7,000 for the stock market? And it's like $20, $30, $50 interest a month for three months, and I'll pay back. So I'm paying back a three month loan. But I need to be over PDT because I think I know how to make money in the stock market, and I'm quitting my job in September, so next year. And I want to be consistently profitable by then. So you might be saying this guy is burning his bridges, this guy doesn't know what he's doing, this guy is mental. But I would say that I have top risks before and they have been rewarded and I have fucking won. And if you've only got one life, you need to live the dream and fucking take that opportunity. So it is risky. I am taking a chance. But I say you've got one life, take the chance. I will not be risking that. Eight seven thousand dollars that I've risked, it'll be cap basically cap though to sit in an interactive brokers account uh, to get over PDT. And as I said in the Excel, I want to go from 26, 27 to 30, then 30 to 40, then 40 to 60, 60, 80, 80, 80 to 100. But what I'd be interested to hear from you in the close of this video on, on the essence of back to back to back three months. Am I doing the right thing by taking a loan to get over PDT? Comment yes. Comment no, because I'd love to hear your opinion. I think I'm doing the right thing, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm young and inexperienced. Maybe I'll blow up and fail, but I know that I've talked to my parents about it. They said yes. I spoke to my brother about it. He said fucking yes. In my heart of hearts, I thought yes. I'm traveling, motherfucker. I'm on my way. Live the dreams.